UN headquarters, New York, as Hans Blix delivers his second weapons inspection report on Iraq. Germany, in a joint it will be responded to by 15 members of the Security Council and through the week, 191 other nations, each with their own message. And each message will be massaged and retuned for a home audience. Still more voices come from a few protesters nearby keeping constant vigil. I would like to see the uh, flag hung upside down as a sign for the anti-war movement in this country, uh, because according to the... Somewhere else you don't like this country. I love this country. My father died for that flag. People are cruel. One report, a thousand points of view. We follow one of those perspectives in this program, through the eyes of Yahya Mamasani, Arab League ambassador to the United Nations. Mamasani, a career diplomat, now the Arab world's representative in this critical week. Enough. We will not tolerate Iraq continuing to have weapons of mass destruction to be used against... One by one, each country gives their response to the Iraqi crisis. It soon becomes clear which side of the debate the bulk of delegates will be supporting. C'est qu'un usage de la force serait si lourd de conséquences pour les hommes, pour la région et pour la stabilité internationale qu'il ne saurait être envisagé qu'en dernière extrémité. The normally sober Security Council continually erupting with remarkable responses. I, I have to call to order the audience. It's not allowed to applause here uh, in uh, the Security Council. Uh. I am an old hand here. I have been here a long time to tell you. I was here in the 60s, in the 70s. This is the first time that diplomats representing sovereign states applaud another statesman in the Security Council. And the message is clear. The public opinion of diplomats does not to go to war. Applause may be encouraging, but Iraq's ambassador here, Mohammed al-Duri, knows that it won't be enough to stop a war. Iraq has been critical of some of its fellow Arab League members for their apparent ambivalence in opposing the war. But Mamasani maintains that the Arab position is clear and strong and bewildered as to why countries like Australia would want to be involved. What threat does Iraq pose to those countries beyond the Seven Seas? Why should Australia be threatened by Iraq? Is there a threat from by Iraq to Australia? None whatsoever. Why should Australian blood be shed in the Middle East? Why should you antagonize the people of the Arab world and the Muslim world? There are so many of you who would rather not have to face this issue, but it's an issue that must be faced, and that is whether or not it is time to consider serious consequences of the kind intended by 1441. the summit of the European Union, يعني شيراك, وبلير وكلهم كله أسد دول أوروبا عندهم بيرح اجتماع وقالوا إنه نحن بدنا حل سلمي لأديت العراق لأن الشعوب الأوروبية بدها الحل السلمي شوف إيش هالكلام الحلو لأن الشعوب الأوروبية بدها حل سلمي نحن ملتزمين بالحل السلمي إن شاء الله الأخبار منيحة والله بتعرف اليوم أدنى ما عنا شرب نحن مجلس الأمن كان بده ينعقد الساعة عشرة أجلوا له بعض الظهر بسبب التلج well, the council has unfortunately been cancelled. The session of the council for the morning session has been cancelled because of the snowstorm in New York. <laughs> Apparently, even the snow can uh, stop the council from meeting. Maybe nobody can stop it, but nature can. Mamasani is putting the final touches on his speech, which he'll deliver to the Security Council in a few hours when the blizzard stops. It's an unenviable task trying to write a single speech that encapsulates the voices of the Arab League. 
like other international institutions, cracks are appearing under the weight of the Iraq issue. With the exception of Kuwait, virtually all of the Arab League's 22 members gathering here in Cairo are opposed to the war, but many of them have good reason not to make too much noise about it. Some, like Qatar, Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, all play host to US forces. Others, like Jordan, are heavily reliant upon US intelligence and military aid. The more radical members, Syria, Libya and Sudan, are reluctant to be seen to be provoking the United States. Each of them harbours fears that America may target them next. Mamasani is probably freer than any of them to speak bluntly. So uh, the more aggressive, the more um, challenging the question are, the more inciting and yeah. the more challenging for me. This is what I, I don't like that interviews. I like challenge, I like tough questions. Yeah. I enjoy tough questions because I know how to answer them. Over three days, I questioned Mamasani about the credibility and effectiveness of Arab nations in this current crisis and the impression that they are divided or compromised on the issue. This is our car. For Nobody wants war. In fact, but yesterday... The, the, but, but nobody wants Saddam Hussein either. Even... This is not the question. This is not, on, this is not the question. This is not the question. We, the question is, are there weapons of mass destruction? This is the issue that the United Nations is facing in Iraq. And, and if there is no weapons of mass destruction, then why do you want to go and attack Iraq? This is the issue in the United Nations. But even among the, um, the Arab nations, or the Arab nations particularly, there have been the most mute about um, um, Iraq and uh, Saddam Hussein. This is coming from Europe. Uh, again, again, I will tell you that the issue that threatens the Arab nation now is a war on Iraq in addition to the Israel's occupation of Arab territory. Israel has stockpiles of yeah, weapons that, that, of that, destruction. That, that's but well, the, that's but, well and good, but where are the Arab nations now when we're talking about Iraq? It's, it's French, it's Germans, it's... Where are the Arab nations? Talking? No, the Arab nations are strongly, solidly united against a war in Iraq. This is for sure. This, there is no question about it. But the media, of course, highlights Chirac and Schroeder and, uh, Schroeder and uh, Blair. And the, 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 the highlights now is coming from the European because the Europeans are more influential and effective in the Security Council. There's also criticism that from uh, various uh, Arab nations that their own governments aren't representing them strongly enough on that. Come on, this is, this is talk. How, 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 how can you say this? How can one say this? There are elections in the Arab countries and they think a peaceful solution is the best solution for the region and for the whole world. I think now you are about to get off because you cannot go in. It's as far as I can go. Huh? That's as far as you can yeah. go. In al israra ala shanni al harbi ala al iraq fi al waqti alladhi تسير فيه عمليات التفتيش بخطى حثيثة نحو التأكد من نزع أسلحة الدمار الشامل في العراق تطرح أسئلة عما إذا كان المقصود بالحرب حقا نزع أسلحة الدمار الشامل أم أن هناك غايات وأهداف أخرى one of the fears of the Arab nations is that America harbors a broader agenda to reshape the entire region an agenda given new impetus by their war on terror and their conviction that several Arab League members are harboring or ignoring violent fundamentalist groups within their borders. The Arab League and the Arab, uh, 22 members of the Arab League have already signed a convention to combat terrorism. We have our own convention to combat terrorism. And we have cooperated with the United Nations and with the Americans and with the Europeans on targeting and hunting a lot of those terrorists, for example, the last incident in, Rem in Yemen where a terrorist was killed, it was done, of course, through uh, Arab intelligence. So in general, I can, I can s very clearly say that the Arabs are cooperating in the process, in the campaign to uh, compact terrorism via the United Nations. You know, it's not only the United States that have to fight uh, terrorism, it's the United Nations. This is the legal authority, the international authority. It is patently clear by the criteria established under 1441 that Iraq is in further material breach of its obligations. Australia's ambassador to the UN, John Douth, addresses the Security Council immediately before Mamasani. They've become a fitting double act at the UN and in the media, presenting two very divergent sides of the debate.
Australia found the intelligence presented by Secretary Powell compelling. You want, you want the resolution simply to go to war. That's why you want the resolution for nothing else. Mamasani can speak for Arab leaders who publicly need to be more diplomatic in their criticism of America. Let's wait. Why are you in a hurry to go to war and bring that destruction to the area? This and Australia, increasingly seen as an active champion for the war, can present an American message with a different accent. What I want is Iraq to comply with its obligations. Now let me ask you this. Your country, Australia, is sending boats and sending soldiers. Where is the threat? Where is the imminent threat that Iraq poses to you? Let me tell you, why do you have to spill the Australian blood and Arab blood on Iraqi territory? Why? What interest do you have? Why do you want to antagonize the whole Arab world against you? Why? Is there a reason for this? Does it serve your interest? <laughs> As the diplomatic chess game plays itself out, other business at the UN goes on, like this committee on the ongoing question of Palestine. The issue of Palestine and Israel lies at the heart of virtually every Arab response to the question of Iraq's transgressions of UN resolutions. If you are saying that there is a threat by weapons of mass destruction, what about Israel? In our region, we come from the region, we are the region, we are the region. We know what threatened us. Israel has nuclear weapons, chemical weapons, and biological weapons. And they have it in stockpiles. Why does anybody mention Israel? This committee will pass more resolutions, as it has for years with little result. But there'll be no media attention here. The main game is down the hall. It soon becomes clear that the numbers are not going America's way. The U.S. begins to speak privately to various nations about introducing a new resolution to give America and its allies a pretext for military action. They'll need smart wording and the support of nine of the 15 Security Council members. It's a move which Mamasani needs to try to head off. The Syrian ambassador, Mikhail Weber, becomes a key player in the move against the new US resolution. He's one of a group of ten non-permanent members of the Security Council who are being courted by Colin Powell. It is a rare event to overhear lobby conversations at the UN, but it's here, not the formal debating chambers, that the real work is done. For nations like Syria, there is a greater issue at stake here than just Iraq. All the Arab nations are acutely aware of America's implied threats to reshape all of the Middle East. Iraq, they fear, may just be the first. You can't just choose a state and go and attack it just because you don't like the ruler or you don't like the system. This is unfair. Today it's Iraq. Tomorrow who's next? Iraq's ambassador, Mohammed al Duri, is looking for information on Powell's latest moves. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. They are working now. You know that your people here, they are working for a new resolution 
The Australians? Yeah, the Australians now are working very hard now. Are they pushing? They, 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 they are... Uh, for war? For war? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, ah. yeah, yes, yes. Yes, they are campaigning that, now that beyond, that? on behalf of the United States. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, the so the ambassador here, His Excellency uh, Ambassador, what is his name? John. John. Yeah. Yeah, he is campaigning now uh, on behalf of uh, Australian government. How is he campaigning? Is he? Uh... Well, yeah, he, he is now uh, make around all people here, especially members of Security Council, etc., etc. Campaign. Do, do you think there's any chance that people will change their minds, or is everybody's position set? Where? Here in the at the UN. Uh, can can he persuade? Well, you, you know, uh, there is ongoing processing. Uh, your your uh, the Australian stand and the and the, and the Security Council was very clear and very tough against against Iraq. And uh, uh, you you can say he is talking like Mr. Blair on behalf of United States. So this is this similarity is is very clear between Mr. Blair and Mr. Uh, your Prime Minister. Uh, his name, Howard. Howard, 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 Howard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he took a very, a very tough position, yes. A virtual mini council of the Arab League, Egyptians, Lebanese, Iraqis, gather outside the members' lounge to discuss the shape of America's new resolution. Keen to hear the news from Security Council member, Syria's Makal Weber. <laughs> وهذا كان تفسير القانوني في عام 98 ووزع علينا منفق صحيح ولذلك الآن يركز على هذا الماتيريال بريتش والفرصة الآخرة والعواقب الوخيمة إذا ما حصل علي بده أي شيء تيمشي طيب أستعد الله مع السلامة أمباسرة أمباسرة Can I get one more comment off you said America has made it clear that they think the Middle East um, is politically a mess. It's a uh, uh, dictatorial uh, nations, tyrannical uh, regimes. Um, clearly, they do have an, an agenda. I think this responsibility is not the responsibility neither of America nor of the Security Council to indulge themselves with the uh, political life and regimes or systems of uh, these countries, whatever it is should be left to the uh, people themselves of that area. Can, can the people themselves, uh, this, can the people they themselves can, express they can, themselves? As any, as any kind, as any sort of people in the world. Okay? Thank you. Few people would portray the Arab world as a model of democracy, a point which Mamasani bristles at. First of all, why pick on the Arabs? This is absolutely not correct to say tyrannical, to say this is not true. We all have elections. There are kingdoms that is with the consent of the people. The people of but the democracies or not, there are still other rights and other issues at play for him in the coming weeks. Nobody has the right, whoever it is, big power or any other power, nobody has the right to impose its desires, its interests, its wish among other people. This is something that goes to the 18th century. This is something that goes to the era before the 1939. Again, we should not inflame this whole world with conflicts. 21st century should be a, 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 a century of peace, not a century of wars. Igniting war now, it will never end. The, 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 the,